The Bible says the Word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And the Word of God is profitable. We're going to preach that Word to you today. Amen. And you know, for years and years and years, I've always heard people say, well, all things work together for good. But you know, there's a stipulation that goes along with that in the book of Romans. It says, and we know that all that happens to us is working for our good if we love God and are fitting into His plans. Now, if you don't love God and are not fitting into His plans, and you don't have the promise that everything is working together for good to those that love the Lord. So what I would just advise you to do today is if you don't know Jesus, first of all, accept him as your Savior. And then let, let the Lord Jesus become the Lord of your life. Let God direct yes. your path. Let God lead you. And then you fit into his plans. If yes. he says go to church on Sundays, go to church when the doors are open, no, don't forsake it, then do it. Get your families up and bring them to church. If he says bring the tithes to the storehouse, do it. If he says love your neighbor, do it. Be obedient to him. And then you can expect him to work for your good. And everybody said amen. 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 And I want to give another welcome to the television audience and uh, say we're here for you. That's our slogan. Uh, and we are here for you to teach you the Word of God, to tell you how to be an overcomer, to be a master of life in order to win the, the battles that you fight every day. You know, you ought to come to Lakewood Church because more happens than what you see on television. We have miracles, physical miracles, spiritual miracles. We have wonderful things happen here. Hurting humanity finds help and real compassion here in this church. So if you have a need, not only listen on television, but come out here to be with us in person. And everybody said amen. amen. All right, let's hold up our Bibles and let's make our confession. Everybody say it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. All right, let's open our Bibles, television audience, to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11 says in verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I want to emphasize hope for and not seen. Another translation says, Now faith is the proof of things that we do not see. Another translation says, Faith perceives as real fact what is not yet revealed to the senses. Another translation says, Faith is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us even though we cannot see it up ahead. And you know it's so important to understand Bible faith. Once a light turns on in you, and you understand Bible faith, it will revolutionize your life. Spiritually, physically, financially, maritally, psychologically, emotionally. You will become master of all of life because God has promised that he works by faith. But many people do not understand faith. They think it's just sort of kind of believe in something, you know. And uh, Jesus said, now have the faith of God. Have the God kind of faith. What is the God kind of faith? If we could have the God kind of faith, that's Bible faith, then things wonderful can happen to us. And I have a dream for all of you. I want you to have the faith that will bring you out of debt, that will bring your children out of trouble that'll bring you, uh, uh, bring you the best things in life, that'll help you have a vision to reach out. I, I have a dream to help everyone who watches on television. I'm not just here to play games. We pay this money ourselves so we can help you. I want you to have faith to change your world that you live in and have the miracle that you need. And, uh, you know, it's so easy to misunderstand that. I, 
I lived in Paris, Texas. I, I was born in Paris, Texas. Not Paris, France, Paris, Texas. Every Saturday we went to town. I was so happy because when we went to town, Daddy gave me two nickels. One nickel for vanilla fudge, candy, square pieces. You get lots of it back then for a nickel. And then a nickel to go to the theater where I saw, now let me date myself, Tom Mix. <laughs> Many of you don't even know who he is. <laughs> and all these, you know, and that was a great time, you know, we, because we knew we were going to have a good time up there uh, walking around that square. And we just, it's so safe, they'd just turn us loose. And we'd have a time to meet someplace. Well, I heard about a little girl, and I put this in one of my books. Uh, she, uh, you know, had a daddy like we uh, did, and, and, and she uh, went to town, and she went around the square, and she saw a beautiful dress she liked. And, uh, oh, she wanted that dress so bad. And uh, so she asked her daddy, she said, Daddy, will you buy me that dress? He said, yes, I'll buy it for you next Saturday. And you know that little girl got so happy? She was happy all day Sunday and all day Monday, all day Tuesday. When she went, the school children wondered, why are you so happy? She said, I have a new dress. Where is it? I don't see a new dress. Oh, but I've got a new dress. My daddy promised me that he'd get me that dress. She rejoiced. And they, many of them made fun of her and said, you don't have a dress. Your daddy's not going to keep his word. He doesn't tell the truth. You'll never get that dress. She had a little battle. But she said, my daddy promised me. He looked in my face and he said, I'm going to buy you that dress next Saturday. And she said, Saturday's coming. Yeah. Oh, Thursday got there and they tried to talk her out of it. And she said, Saturday's coming. Friday got there, they made fun of her, but she said, Saturday's coming. And you know, on Saturday, he went out there and bought her that dress. But the point is, her faith was in her daddy's words. Now, her daddy could not, could lie. But our God cannot lie. And you know, she rejoiced when she didn't have the dress just as much as when she got the dress. Faith is hearing God say something to you. To find a promise in the Bible about God's goodness. And then say, my father said I could have it. And then fight your way through until Saturday comes. Because I'm telling you, all the promises of God are yes and amen. What does that mean? You look at that promise and read it and say, God, is that for me? He says, yes, and you shout amen. amen. You see, she rejoiced. Even though she didn't have it, she only had the word of her daddy. And God, the God kind of faith, is to have no evidence for your blessing except God's word. To have no evidence that you have what you want except you have a promise from Almighty God. And in the face of an unbelieving world, you laugh, you rejoice, you praise God before you get it because you know Saturday is coming. Yes, Everybody shout, Saturday is coming. coming. You know, people think that getting miracles from God is a matter of, you know, just asking you got it right then. No, God wants your faith to be out there. Faith only functions where there's no evidence that you got anything from God. And, and that's Bible faith. Jesus called the fig tree. He said, no man eat fruit of you anymore. And, uh, and you know, it didn't look like anything happened. He passed back by there. It looked the same way. But when they came back the next day, it was withered from the roots. And they said, my, look at the fig tree that you curse. It's withered from the roots. And Jesus said, have the faith of God. The God kind of faith. What is the God kind of faith? The God kind of faith says what God says and then walks on and doesn't look at the circumstances. He didn't worry about that tree uh, not looking dead. He knew it was dead. He said the God kind of faith is to say with your mouth, believe in your heart, and then let leave the rest with God. Amen. Now listen to these scriptures. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. 
It's impossible to please God without that kind of trust in God. God will not be pleased with people who think he's a liar. Amen. It's impossible to please God without faith. Well, now, if we don't have any faith, how can we please God? If God has not provided a way, then God would be unjust. But God has provided a way that everybody can have faith. How do you get faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Get out your Bible, dust the dust off of it, open it, and start to read it. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Now, when you hear the Word of God, you must receive it and embrace it for yourself, get it in your heart, say it with your mouth, and act like it's so. Just like that little girl. She didn't have the dress. It was still down there in the store. But she had her father's word. She rejoiced. She praised the Lord. Do you know what Jesus said? He said, uh, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, be moved, and it'll move. And listen to this. And nothing shall be impossible to you. You understand he's talking to human beings? Yeah. He's talking to men and women working in the world with problems in the world, he looked in their faces and said, I am making it possible by my visit to this earth, breaking the power of the devil and giving you God's word in love and mercy where nothing will be impossible to you. I, I like to think about that. I don't believe anything's impossible to us. God said to Abraham, lift up your eyes. Whatever you see, I'll give it to you. I tell you, I'm looking. Whatever I see, God gives me. And, and that faith comes by hearing the Word of God and believing the Word of God. And nothing shall be impossible. Listen to what Jesus said. This man said to him, had a, who had an epileptic son, and the disciples couldn't heal him. The, the man said, Lord, if you, can, if you can help us, have compassion and help us. Jesus said, if it's not with me. Jesus said to that distraught father, if you can believe. Now listen. If you can just get faith. All things are possible to him that believeth. Think about that. Do you believe these scriptures? Do you actually believe what I'm telling you out of the Bible? With God, all things are possible. It may not jump up overnight. You know, you plant it in your heart and let it grow and grow. It takes time for the word to grow. Remember that story I used to tell you about Daddy taking the cultivator? And he had, a lot of you people too young, you don't know anything about farming. But uh, anyway, they, he cultivated the land, you know, break it up with a cultivator. And then and you go along there and you drop seeds in it. Now, he had, he had a seed dropper, but uh, he didn't use just the seed dropper. I was a seed dropper too. <laughs> So he said, John, I want you to go down here and I want you to drop corn right down in these little holes. So I dig a little hole and drop corn. I dig a little hole and drop corn. I got tired of that. That hurt you back. I mean, I don't like to do that. I'm telling you, I got out of the cotton patch and the corn patch and I said, God, it'll be a miracle if I ever go back. I'm going to have to be mighty hungry and to ever go back there. But anyway, I was going down the road, going down the road. That's on the other side. And I go, and a little bright idea, you know, bright ideas come to little tired boys. <laughs> and so at the end of the row, I dug me a great big hole. And I put all that corn inside the big hole and covered it up. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. <laughs> Be sure your sins will find you out. I was so happy, I got rid of all that corn, I went home to play. And the corn was hidden, but I didn't realize there was life in that corn. And you know, after a few weeks or a month or so, you know, that was the strangest looking field you ever saw. <laughs> it had a straight line of corn, just as beautiful, but right on the end, it had a thousand stalks coming up. <laughs> you know why? Because my corn came up. But let me tell you something, folks. There's a law of seed, time, and harvest. If you'll sow God's word, he said, let, let faith be like a seed, like a seed, like a seed. The seed has to be planted. It has to be watered. It has to be nurtured. It has to be patience. And then it will come up. Plant the word of God in your heart and water it with joy and thanksgiving. It will come up. And the Bible says nothing 
shall be impossible to you. Could I have an amen? amen? We must hear the word of God like the little girl. We must trust God like she trusted her father. And we must talk like it's so. That's the reason I don't like to hear negative confessions. Amen. Nobody has a, has a habit to say, darling, you just won't believe. That cuts on me and I say, I am a believer. I know she doesn't mean it like that, but I don't like to hear that. We must talk like God told us the truth. Amen. Don't ever talk as though God lied to you. Amen. Will you say, what if I don't feel good? Well, I didn't. I'm not talking to, uh, telling you to tell how you feel. I, I want you to tell what God says. Amen. God says, by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. Amen. Well, don't say what your pocketbook says. Say what God says. Uh, my God is supplying all my needs. Don't say what the world say. Say, say this, it is God that gives me power to get well. Yeah. Don't say what your circumstances say. Say what God says. He always makes me to triumph. I am more than a conqueror. And you must not only act like the little girl did, you must know your Saturday is coming. Yeah. It may look like it'll never come, but Saturday is on its way. If you got a promise in your heart, God cannot lie. God is not a man that he should lie, the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it and shall he not do it? Hath he spoken it and shall it not come to pass? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word shall not pass away. His word will come up in your heart and nothing shall be impossible to you. I knew it. he's been here in this church, a little midget, little midget, so high. Had a little midget face and all of that. You think it's possible for God to grow up little short people? Well, he straightened out somebody's spine right over here. Her spine was so, so crooked. Maybe you have me, Crystal? Anyway, her spine was crooked, just as crooked as it would be. And I'm telling you, God straightened it out. Isn't that right? I'm, when I felt of her spine so crooked, I felt so sorry for her. And the next time I felt of it, it was as straight as mine. I mean, God can do anything. Yeah. And, and it's not impossible for God to change Crystal and Christopher right there. And the little mother, too. I, I believe we have a big God. And you know what God did to this little, this little midget? God touched him. And over a period of months, he grew to six foot two. <laughs> Amen. He's a great soul winner. We'll have him down here sometime. He comes through every once in a while. But, but with God, all things are possible. Amen. Don't limit God. Amen. But if you will, do like the little girl, talk like it's yours, and rejoice like it's yours, Saturday will come. Amen. You remember over there in uh, Second Chronicles, you don't need to turn to it. Those, those great armies, three great armies came against Jehoshaphat. He was outnumbered. He just had a little band of people. And you know, sometimes it looks like all hell has been loosed uh, on, your, on your family. Have you ever gotten up in the morning and just want to get back in bed? Amen. Get up on the other side? Well, these armies came against Jehoshaphat. And, uh, and Jehoshaphat, the Bible says that he feared greatly because he knew he was outnumbered. And the devil may be coming against you in every way, shape, and fashion. Nothing happening good. So the Bible says that Jehoshaphat set himself to seek the Lord. That's the first thing he ought to do. And so he got all the men and women and children and his little band out there in the field. And they began to pray. Now listen to me. Begin to pray. And they said, oh Lord God, these, this great army is coming against us. And they're, they're going to kill us. And we do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. That's a good thing to do in trouble. Lord, I don't know what to do. Lord, it looks like I'm going under. It looks like financially we're gone. It looks like physically I'm going to die, Lord. It just looks like everything's happening. But Lord God, Lord God, they're all coming against me, but I lift my eyes from the army to you. Oh, look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. I lift my eyes to you. Then the Bible says, now notice carefully, then the Spirit of God came upon Jehaziel. 
And he said, fear not, you shall not have to fight in this battle, for the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Amen. Now all they had was a man that prophesied what God said. The same armies are there, the same danger is there, but now they have a word from God. See, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Yeah. Now, I want to show you what Jehoshaphat did. Jehoshaphat did not continue to fear and tremble. He heard from God. Yeah. He said, the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. You will not even need to fight. So they said, let's do this. Let's set the singers and the praisers out in front. And they put all the choir out in front. Normally, if you're going to fight a battle, you will slip around and be real, uh, you know, uh, uh, cunning and, and slip up on their blind side. But they just got the whole choir right out in front, making the loudest noise they could. And they begin to shout and sing, uh, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. The Lord is good. They begin to rejoice and to praise the Lord. What for? The armies are there. They're rejoicing because they believe God. Yeah. And you can look in the face of your storm and your trouble and your heartache and, and your sickness. And I feel like many people watching are so, uh, so bad in your sickness. You've been given up by doctors. You can look it in the face and, and rejoice when you have a promise from God. And God will see that his promise comes true. Faith can move mountains. They begin to rejoice. Now notice this scripture in Second Chronicles. Listen to it. And as they began to sing and praise, as they began to sing and to praise. Now, now look at me. It didn't say, and as they began to weep and to cry and to complain and wonder where God was and blame God and blame everybody else. No, it didn't say that at all. When they begin to sing and to praise, the next two words, the Lord. I'm telling you, the Lord begins to move when you begin to sing and praise. You know what singing and praising means? It means I believe God. I believe God's going to defeat this army. I believe God's going to do what he said he was going to do. I believe God. I believe God. How do I know I believe God? I'm singing. I'm praising. So they begin to say, the Lord is good, his mercy endures forever. And the Bible says, and when the Lord heard them sing and praise in the face of all that danger, he set ambushments against them, and the enemy turned on themselves and defeated themselves, and they got the victory that day through singing and praising. Yeah. Now, now that is a picture of the God kind of faith. You say, well, Brother Osteen, I just, don't, I just don't want to do it that way. That's, that's a hard way to sing and to praise when I'm in trouble. But that's the only way to do it. God is pleased when you do that. God is pleased. You say, how do I get the first part of God kind of faith? By believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Even the faith that you exercise to get saved is given to you by God. It's given to you through scriptures like this. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now that whosoever means you. It doesn't matter how bad you are, how good you are, how rich you are, how poor you are. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. You don't have to go to hell. You can go to heaven. You believe that? All right, now you call. Say these words. Put your hand on your heart. And say these words, either under your breath or out loud. It doesn't matter. Just say them. So, oh God, I know I'm a sinner. God, you know I'm a sinner. Lord, I don't want to die and go to hell. I don't want to live in this hell I'm in right now. I want peace of heart. I want my sins forgiven. I want you to come into my heart and be my Savior. I'm tired of doing my own thing. I open wide the door of my heart. Come in, Lord Jesus, and save me today. I make you my Lord and my Master. And from this day forth, I'll serve you. Thank you, Jesus. You are my Lord, and I'll never turn back to the world. Thank you.